uh, welcome everybody. Welcome back from lunch. So, uh, oh, well, let's get started. Uh, Surf Drive, the Surf Sarah site report. Okay. Ah. Okay, we started this about uh, three years ago when uh, the Dutch universities asked the uh, Surf Foundation to uh, come up with a solution for a personal uh, sink and share, uh, coming up with a personal sink and share service for Dutch uh, universities and high, higher education. So we, uh, we started Surf Drive and um, we started out very small, only using uh, four notes that we borrowed from another project. And uh, well, the basic ingredients that are on that slide on the the upper left hand corner are still the, the, the basic building blocks of the servers. Uh, started out with uh, own cloud, Apache. We needed Apache for the support for Shibboleth. Uh, we wanted a federated login so that uh, the, all the institutes using their own IDPs would determine, uh, first of all, if they would uh, uh, they use ServeDrive and also which one of their users are allowed to use ServeDrive. So uh, we use Shibboleth and SAML2 to do uh, federated login uh, using SurfConnect. Another uh, essential ingredient was uh, Galera MariaDB uh, HA proxy that most of you know, and uh, unfortunately also GlusterFS. But I'll come back to that uh, that one later. And GlusterFS we've used in uh, distributed replicated uh, setup to uh, prevent data loss. If uh, things would go wrong. Okay, well, the, the number of users started to grow rapidly, and as such, also the size of our infrastructure, which you can see over here, that uh, also separate database servers. We also separated uh, the, the storage from the, um, uh, from the, the web services, also uh, uh, a number of services that uh, will do uh, all kinds of management tasks. And as the service continues to grow, this is uh, what it is now, uh, about 16 web servers, 12 storage servers, seven database servers, uh, still two proxy nodes in high availability, and the complete environment is totally redundant. And that was a quality that uh, was very beneficial to us, especially at the time when we needed to uh, move our uh, hardware to a new data center. So it's this. And, uh, well, as we were growing, we also uh, were tweeting this. <laughs> uh, also, we did a, a uh, some tweeting of uh, stuff we are less proud of or stuff uh, that didn't go all that well. But everything uh, grew rapidly. And at the moment, we're at about uh, 22,650 users. And, um, and about 38 institutes are now uh, paying customers, and we also have a bunch of other ex uh, institutes that are uh, testing uh, the service, and that may, uh, in a later stage, uh, may uh, become uh, one of our customers. Well, the number of users, it's a fairly linear type of growth, and it keeps growing. Uh, there are periods that we grow for about 1,000 users per month. Uh, roughly, we uh, grow about uh, 10,000 users every year. Uh, also, the amount of storage is uh, grown continuously. Uh, here you see a few, uh, over there you see a few uh, dips, and that's not because users were throwing away data, but we were throwing away their data. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that, yeah, but it's a legal way of throwing away data. Uh, the reason for that was <laughs> that uh, the trash bins were not really cleaned up and also the, the multiple versions of files were not really well cleaned up. So we did some manual intervention. But I've been told that, uh, well, lately everything uh, runs quite fine now, so manual intervention is uh, not necessary anymore. Um, also, this the amount of storage per user. Uh, also, the, the, the dips at the end is also, of course, because of our manual intervention. And at the moment, uh, roughly everybody uses on average roughly seven gigabytes. 
Uh, also, the amount of connected clients. And, uh, as a client, I would prefer to uh, a user, uh, a unique combination of user, IP, and agent. And we're about uh, somewhere between uh, 20 and 30,000 uh, uh, each day. And I've also had a look at uh, the, the, uh, the amount of IPs that are connecting. And that's roughly well, close to 10,000 uh, different IPs every day. So the, the service is uh, quite well used. And uh, these are the, the unique users in the red line. But the blue line is uh, the number of users that, uh, that are registered users that are, have access to the system and also have uh, used the system only once, or at least once. And the red line is the, the people that uh, log in every day. And that's also continuously growing, but it, it seems to level off a little bit. At the start of the service, it was about a factor of three between the, the amount of users and the, the people that log in every day, and, and now it's somewhat less, some, a little bit less than a factor of four. Uh, Another thing that uh, the number of users that log in uh, every week and also every month, and we have about uh, well 6,700 users that log in at least once a week, and about 9,000 that log in uh, at least once a month. So that's quite okay. That's sort of uh, well about 40 something percent of your total uh, user base. So that, that's not that bad. Uh, now, the real hard work that, uh, well, I didn't do, but, uh, but uh, Tom and Wesley and Jean-Marie and, uh, and, um, uh, did, it was uh, the data center move. Uh, the, in the fall of last year, the Surf Sara had to move its data center to uh, an entire new building that you see on the right-hand side. At the time within, when this picture was taken, it was still under construction. But, uh, and which was absolutely massive uh, operation. I've been told it took about 78 full truck rides to, uh, to move everything. And of course, Surf Drive was uh, one of the services that needed to be moved. And uh, well, of other uh, services uh, that we needed to move, uh, a downtime was allowed, but of course not for Surf Drive. So our ambition was to, uh, to move the whole thing while staying in production. And therefore, therefore it helped that everything was redundant. Uh, we only had a small downtime when we needed to, um, uh, let's say, to, uh, to patch the, the uplink to the internet to another connection. That was the only downtime we ever ne needed, and the rest was, uh, the servers were while moving, everything was still up and running. And it took about uh, two weeks to uh, move everything, and, uh, well, a very detailed plan was made by, uh, by Tom to... Uh, to schedule everything and server by server, uh, everything was moved. And uh, we did about two to three servers uh, every working day. And here a picture of the, the heroes that did all the, all the hard work and uh, made everything a real success. I do have to mention that this uh, picture with the beer that was after the move, so, <laughs> so don't get any uh, bad ideas. <laughs> okay. So uh, th that was the fun part. Now the, uh, let's say, the, 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 the challenging part. Uh, we, used, uh, we started out with Luster FS. And uh, the first one, two years, it, it was one, one and a half years, it ran pretty fine. But then we saw all kinds of issues. And especially when you wanted to expand the infrastructure, we noticed that it would, uh, the, the Gluster FS clients do a lot of work, also in rebalancing data and while doing that they uh, do not wish to send any data to clients who are connecting the, to them through the web which means uh, well at one point we uh, doubled our infrastructure and we saw that uh, we had a, about a downtime for a week which was really really bad uh, later on we also find out that even with a very minute extension of this infrastructure, the, the servers were still down for one and a half hour. So um, that was a, a huge, uh, that was a huge problem. Also rebalancing of data took a long time, backups took a long time. Uh, we have seen uh, failures of uh, two nodes at the same time, which were each other couple in, in GlusterFS, meaning that uh, some data, GlusterFS would say, well, I'm fine. 
but it, I'm not uh, going to show you some data, which is a bit scary with own cloud sync clients and uh, the combination of that. That is stuff that we've seen. So all in all, we wanted to get rid of Gluster and uh, we wanted to look for something else. So, but uh, what, are we, uh, what are we going to choose then? then? Well, migrating the users, we knew beforehand it would be a lengthy operation and uh, it will, would be a heavy operation and we only want to do this once. So whatever we choose, it had better be right. Uh, we wanted to avoid uh, risks as much as possible. So uh, what we looked at solutions and of course storage solutions, there are an infinite number of them, but we're particularly looking for storage that was already, uh, storage solutions that were already deployed at a fairly large scale for a similar kind of, uh, of service. So uh, we have looked at uh, IBM uh, Spectra scale, uh, GPFS and, and Scality. And we did uh, tests with both and uh, the winner is, and now. <laughs> Uh, it became Scality. Now I don't want to uh, disappoint the IBM people because both products were, were really good. We were satisfied with both of them. But in the end, uh, Scality had some features that would fit a little bit better in the longer term vision that we have for this service. So therefore, Scality won. So uh, IBM lost, but I could tell you it, it was a photo finish. Uh, well, that's uh, object storage, uh, I2P3 in the University of Vienna are also using it. Uh, we are going to use the, the fuse connector. Uh, there are different connectors to this storage. And we're going to use the fuse connector to, uh, to attach the web servers to. It can run multi-data center. Uh, very small files are replicated three times. And the other ones you do erasure coding to have less uh, storage overhead. Uh, it's really scalable. Los Alamos has an instance of 500 petabytes. There's also um, a YouTube client, uh, type of service like Daily Motion that uses Scality for, uh, for storing a video. So uh, the migration, well, we took a lot of preparation to, uh, to do this really well. And uh, well, basically uh, we s we're already in the middle of this process at the moment and everything runs quite smoothly. We started in December and we expect to finish by the end of February. Uh, we're going to do institute by institute uh, and group of users by group of users. Uh, with no downtime, only users are locked out for, uh, for, for most uh, users it will be a limited amount of time. Some users will take hours, uh, mostly uh, take in the matter, uh, in order of seconds. Uh, and the procedure is that we sync the data from our backup servers to Scality and then uh, when we're ready, we lock out the user using the file wall uh, mechanism for a brief period of time. We do the final sync and uh, we put a symlink uh, in Scality to point to the new location of the data directory of the user and then we remove the lockout and the user can use his data any, uh, again. So this uh, works perfectly fine. We, uh, we have well, hardly any, we don't have serious issues with this. Uh, well, our major concerns with uh, the setup that we have and also that's, uh, yeah, the databases, the, the scalability of that. Already we have something like uh, seven pretty heavy machines. And uh, okay, now we have uh, well over 22,000 users, but uh, what will happen if the universities decide, decide uh, to give their students an account as well? So we go well over the 100,000, what will happen next? So, and of course, like Dropbox, we also want to ingest 1.3 billion files per day, so we do a little bit better than Dropbox, but okay, you can always dream. <laughs> uh, Further future plans, uh, what we have planned for this year is guest accounts that uh, people from universities have been asking the, for this functionality for years. Uh, also a group accounts where you have group data, data that belongs to groups so that if a user is uh, deleted then the group data will still be there. We want to do a multi data center setup and 24 by 7 monitoring of the whole service. Uh, other thing that we're going to look at this year is an API. Uh, now we have uh, a portal that you see in this picture here where 
admins of uh, universities can, th th uh, let's say, read accounting data, but also throw away users, lockout users, and things like that. But they've uh, asked for an API so they can script everything. So we're going to do that. And of course, we're also going to look at new apps and all. Uh, oh, yeah. OK, well, it's, a, it's an orange uh, banner, but it's, the title is green. Uh, we're not colorblind, but uh, there was an intern at uh, Surf Sarah that did an investigation. Because, OK, now we have uh, 38 institutes. Suppose that, depending on the size of these institutes, uh, they would all have their own sink and share surface. How much energy would that take? And how much energy uh, is consumed by surf drive? And he found out that it was a bit of a factor of 13 difference. So to consolidate everything and put everything in one place uh, is not really also a cost, uh, very cost effective, but it's also very uh, Sustainable. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> okay, questions? If you have, say, 50-something institutes needed to buy hardware, then you have at least, uh, if you want to have the redundancy, you have 100-something database servers, and we only have seven. So that's where you win. Yeah, but we wanted to, uh, what, would you, uh, what the guy compared it to, if, if you have a similar setup with a similar redundancy. The similar quality of the, yeah, of course, you can, for a very small institute, you can take one pizza box and, okay, yeah, yeah. you can do that. But, of course, if your network fails, you, your service is gone. So that. Of course, I'm sure there's efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> it also saves a lot of admins. So that's also. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? Or there's a minute left. So. I will come back to the numbers probably in my talk. Okay. They are very similar and we can probably discuss a little difference in that. Okay. But I, uh, one uh, last question I have. Um, you talked in your one of the last slides about um, guest accounts. Yeah. Guest accounts also for, let me say, for data or only for access? Uh, also for data. And what about ILM or lifecycle? Uh, of the data? Uh, let's say if the, the user is removed, he is removed and the data is also removed. Okay, so. okay. thank you. <laughs>